I'm going to spend the uh, major chunk of this DVD breaking the opening down into ideas and themes so you can understand the nuts and bolts of the classical Dutch and see exactly how this opening is made up and then hopefully use it uh, to your own benefit. I want to take a look at, first of all, why the classical Dutch might not enjoy the best of reputations among the best players. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple of games where Black actually gets pounded to kind of highlight how this reputation occurred in the first place. My first game comes is a very recent one. I'm recording this in February 2012. It was played in January 2012 between Grandmaster Alexander Graf and Uwe Schultz. Now you'll first of all notice the massive rating discrepancy, so probably whatever Schultz played against Graf, he will be expecting to lose. Nevertheless, it does kind of indicate, you know, why Grandmasters might feel this opening is second rate. Now this is the classical Dutch, black plays f5, and white plays the main line really in this game. It's just a steady opening from white, g3, Bishop g2, and now black has to decide how he's going to play this variation. We'll see later on black can play bishop b4 check quite comfortably in this position. Uh, he can play d5 going into the stone wall. But here, Schultz goes down the main line of the classical Dutch. Bishop e7, and now the characteristic move, black plays with d6. Now d6 uh, demonstrates that black really is thinking about the move e5. And you'll see a little later on that this is an indispensable part of uh, Black's armoury in the classical Dutch. If he can play e5 at the right moment, he often gets a comfortable game because he gets enough control of the centre to uh, make his position respectable. If he doesn't manage to play e5, then he's got to find other routes to try to get a good position. In this game, knight c3 was answered by a relatively new move, which actually I'll be recommending a little later on on the DVD. Schultz plays knight e4. Now, there are other moves for black in this position. Uh, two that come immediately to mind are the old-fashioned queen e8, which I don't especially like very much, but it is certainly a move. Black doesn't need to commit his queen to e8 just yet. Or a more modern move, a5. Again, whilst a lot of players might like that move, I'm going to stick with knight e4 as my theoretical recommendation eventually when we get to that section. Knight e4, well, uh, it's a relatively new way to interject complications into the position. There doesn't seem a great deal wrong with it. Graf played queen c2, which is supposed to be the best move. Knight takes c3, queen takes c3. And now around here, my impression is that Schultz starts to play his own moves. Now, if I was playing black in this position, I'd certainly consider moves like bishop f6, putting the bishop on the same diagonal as white's queen. There's also the move a5, which is probably the best move in this position. The main motivation behind that is, of course, it stops White from playing b4 for the time being. Or there's knight c6, as Schultz plays in this game. But unfortunately, I think that's an inaccurate move, and it enables White to gain space on the queen side with b4. And b4 is just a very good move in this position. The problem with now Black's position is that the knight on c6 is in the way of White's advancing pawn chain. So... Black quickly gets a grotty position. I mean, I think he missed times his play in this game. It's clear that Schultz has reserved the knight, um, the e7 square for the knight there, but Black's position is pretty grotty. White's got the obvious plan of just pushing this pawn all the way down to a6 to open up perspectives for the uh, bishop. And Black is taking a long time to get play. With e5 not possible yet, um, Black is scratching around for play. So, knight g6... White plays bishop a3, and with that move, <coughs> he's telling us he's thinking about playing c5, and now black breaks with e5. And frankly, if this move is not working in the current position, then black's game is pretty awful. It looks okay for the time being, because, um, well, black might be able to work up some tactical chances. He's got this bishop on the same diagonal as the queen and the rook. I imagine that Schultz was relatively optimistic at this point. But Graf is very concrete in this game. He doesn't see any ghosts. He sees no threats. And he moves solidly along with rook a d1. So already Black's position is not a great advert for the classical Dutch. Black's behind in development. He hasn't yet solved the problem of his queenside pieces. Uh, White is definitely limbering up to play c5 here. And there are no tactical uh, possibilities for Black. 
Now black can try and simplify here with knight takes f3 check, but this doesn't really solve his problem. Um, white still has c5 in the offing, and he's still, still got considerable pressure down the long diagonal. So however hard black tries to remedy his problems here, and he may play queen e7, white can come through with c5. A very thematic advance. Um, the ease with which white gets a good position in this game is impressive. Uh, black can take this, but then queen d5 check. As usual, when you're better developed, you tend to win the battle of the tactics. And so it is here. I think bishop takes c5 is just a very strong move. If uh, black takes the queen, we take back check. And I think this just wins. I mean, it's white's just going to win the exchange here. If queen f7, well, we just take on f8. Very simple. So going back to the game, um, Schultz played bishop e6, making a noble attempt to complete his development. But as usual, Grandmaster is on top of the tactics, and he plays, to all intents and purposes, a winning move here, knight to d4. The problem first off is that black can't take with a bishop. White goes f4, and the black pieces are loose. If he takes with a knight, as in the game, we get a tactical sequence. Knight takes e6, black's got to take the queen. White takes black's queen, black takes on a3. Knight e6, and there are just too many black pieces on uncomfortable squares in this position. After rook f7, rook d3, black's got to play bishop b4. Rook b3, you can see what's going to happen. Rook e8, only move, and now knight g5. Black loses the battle of the tactics. So he's got to jettison the exchange, and possibly more than that. Bishop d5, rook e e7, and... Uh, Graf is very happy to take material. Black resigns. So a simple performance by uh, White. Graf would have no doubt considered this a very easy day at the office. And first off, that's the type of uh, debacle which we are trying to avoid when we play the classical Dutch.